Hey everybody, I'm MS Farzan, and welcome to this video series on learning JavaScript for digital tabletop game and web development. In this series, I'm going to introduce you to the basics of programming, with a focus on exposing you to JavaScript development best practices and frameworks, although the things we're going to learn will be applicable in other programming languages as well. Throughout this series, I'll be providing an emphasis on learning to code for digital tabletop game and web development, which should be useful for role-playing game, card game, and board game developers who want to create companion apps or digital versions of their games, as well as all JavaScript newcomers. After learning JavaScript and some of the frameworks and engines that we're going to work with, along with some practice projects and outside learning of your own, you'll be able to run simulations, make your own apps, games, and websites, and even develop and deploy multi-user, full-stack projects that you can share with the world. If you're not specifically interested in digital tabletop game development, you'll probably still find this series to be helpful, as we'll be learning core concepts that are central to game and web development that you'll be able to apply to other programming languages and frameworks. And I'm a big proponent of using digital tabletop games in learning to code, because we're able to work on a lot of the logic that goes into digitizing those types of games without having to dive into stuff like physics, vector math, animation, and that sort of thing. We'll be exploring real programming practices, such as setting up an integrated development environment and using GitHub for source control, and taking on projects that will help you polish the skills that will be fundamental in your long-term development as a coder. There are a couple of caveats before we begin. A lot of JavaScript tutorials will start you off by learning HTML and CSS, often within a browser window where you don't have to do any setup. Those tutorials are super useful for learning coding concepts, but not as much for the essentials of the actual programming experience, which includes setting up your own integrated development environment, accessing and contributing to the wider JavaScript ecosystem, and searching for answers to problems when you get stuck. You also don't need to know all that much HTML or CSS to make games. After we work through the basics of programming, we'll split off this video series into two tracks, game and web development. And if you're interested in building web apps, we'll tackle HTML and CSS at that time. I've also put out a similar series on C Sharp and Unity if that interests you instead. Additionally, this video series is meant to be supplemental to your own learning process rather than attempting to replace the hundreds of thousands of hours of free and paid tutorial content out there. I'll suggest practice projects for you to tackle on your own, and highly recommend that you spend some time every week, in addition to these tutorials, to pursue a wider curriculum in JavaScript development. If you don't know where to start, I'd suggest trying your hand at the web tutorials at freecodecamp.org to polish your skills and learn other core concepts. One final note. I won't suggest that JavaScript is the best programming language to learn for game development, or even the best programming language to learn first. It's not very fast in terms of performance, so you won't be able to make AAA first-person 3D action games with it, and it has some idiosyncrasies that make it error-prone and sometimes difficult to, be, to debug. But it is fairly user-friendly to newcomers, and is essential for understanding web development, with several frameworks and engines that can help you to make games. Importantly, it's one of the languages that I'm most comfortable with and has helped me learn other programming languages and game engines too. Okay, with all of that out of the way, let's get started. As you can see here, I'm on the Node.js website, which is one of the components that you're going to have to install as we set up our integrated development environment. We're starting at kind of a weird place if, in terms of the way that other tutorials handle, the, handle starting to learn how to program in JavaScript. Often, as I mentioned, we'll see a website that already has everything set up for you. You can just type in your code and then you'll see something that happens on the screen. I think that's great for when you're just learning, beginning to learn like we are right now. But in the long run, it might frustrate you when you're trying to actually make a website or a game and you don't know how to do that because you've been used to just coding in a browser. So we're going to do the hardest part first, which is setting up our integrated development environment. And for that, we need a few things. Node.js is one of those things. All you need to know about it right now is that it is a runtime that allows us to write JavaScript um, and run programs with it, which is pretty cool. It means that we're able to run JavaScript outside of a browser, whereas historically you've only been able to do that inside a browser. So 
Um, you're going to want to go to Node.js uh, and .org and find the download page and download the appropriate version for your operating system. I'll be working on a Windows machine for the entirety of this uh, tutorial series, so if you're on a Mac or Linux or something else, that might uh, change some of the specifics of what you're going to need to download. But make sure that it's downloaded and installed, and we'll we'll uh, take a look at what it means for it to be installed and how you'll know that it's been installed and configured correctly. The second thing that we need to install is a code editor. A code editor is kind of like Microsoft Word or Google Docs, but much more um, heavy hitting in terms of programming. Has um, A code editor has a lot of features that enhance the code development um, that you're going to be working with for the entirety of your coding career. And some code editors are required for specific programming paradigms or languages, but by and large, you can choose something that suits your needs best. I like to use Visual Studio Community, uh, Community because it has so many features that I'm familiar with and that are useful in my game development and web development. But you might, if you're just starting out and you've never used a code editor before, you might try another code editor, which is called Atom. It's free to download and use. It's um, super basic and simple and has uh, some add-on functionality where if you start coding and you start working on projects and you realize that you need something to help your uh, development workflow, often you can find a package that you can install and um, and add on to your existing workflow that will help you. So uh, there are obviously a lot of other code editors out there. There's something called Sublime, which I think uh, requires a subscription if you want to um, use its deeper feature set. Um, and there's you know a ton of other options out there, but the ones that I've used and that I'm most comfortable with are Atom.io and also Visual Studio Community. Visual Studio Community is supported by Microsoft, so if you um, like Microsoft products or if you're going to wind up working um, in a, um, a C sharp environment or uh, something that uses Microsoft tooling, you might want to get comfortable with Visual Studio as well. The third thing that we're going to need is a command line interface. You might be um, uh, familiar with a command line interface if you've used the command prompt in Windows, if you've used the terminal in um, uh, Mac OS, or if you've used a bash um, terminal. All of these things are somewhat interchangeable in, in conceptually in what they're used for. But a command line interface is going to help us run our code and we're going to get comfortable with it from the get-go so that we know the um, sort of like an industry standard of how to create and deploy code. If you're um, working on Mac, you might have to find a different solution than what I'll be using here. I'm using the Git for Windows um, command line, which as you can see, you can just download right here from um, gitforwindows.org. Um, when we start working with Visual Studio, you'll see that there's actually a uh, command line interface that is included with Visual Studio, and we can use that as well. Um, it's really up to you. I think um, what's really nice about using Git for Windows or Git SCM is that uh, we're going to be using GitHub later on in this tutorial series for version control. So if we get conf uh, if we get familiar with the um, the Git terminal or Git Bash, we'll uh, be doing ourselves a favor because we won't have to learn it again later. So I know that means that you're going to have to install at least three things and make sure they're working before getting started. But I guarantee that it will be well worth the effort when we're up and running, and you'll feel like, oh, I'm actually uh, writing code and deploying it and making it work rather than I'm just uh, creating code that exists in a web browser somewhere and I don't really understand how it's all working together. Great. So here are a few things for us to do to make sure that we have our integrated development environment up and running. First, I'm going to open my uh, Microsoft Visual Studio and just make sure that I'm able to, or my code editor, and make sure that I'm able to uh, create new files in it and um, just um, look at the, the different menus and familiarize, familiarize myself with um, its feature set. Be prepared that a lot of these code editors do have quite a, a lot of features that will take time getting used to. Um, one a note for you if you're using Visual Studio is that if you go up to the Tools menu and you go to, down to Command Line, you can select de Developer Command Prompt or Developer PowerShell and that will bring up a command prompt or a PowerShell, basically a command line interface that you can use. I'll just close this for now because we don't need to use it. 
After I've installed Node and either Git Bash or some other uh, command line interface, right now I have Git Bash open, I can do things like um, uh, navigate between my file system, create directories, execute code, all kinds of different stuff. And, and the way we're going to determine that um, Node is uh, properly set up is we're going to type in Node-V. And as you can see, the, the text might be a little bit small on my screen, but we won't spend that much time in our, in our, um, in our terminal or in our command line interface. It just says uh, the version number that I'm using right now, which is 10.15.3. I think that's an older version, but you know, it'll, it will suit us. It'll work just fine. That just lets me know that I have um, set everything up correctly so that I can run Node on my system. Great. So once we have those things set up, and I realize that's kind of a big ask, and it might take you, um, you know, a half an hour or more to set everything up, um, we're um, going to navigate through our directory similar, similar to the way that we would if we opened a file explorer and we're clicking around in our folders and we're creating new folders. We can do that from our command line interface. And this might seem very basic to you if you've already worked with a command line interface before. What I'm going to do is I'm going to navigate. I, I keep everything in my coding directory. So I'm going to say cd space coding. And you'll see that the path here changes to my coding directory. Well, that's cool. I also have a JavaScript directory. And I'm going to navigate to that by saying cd JavaScript. Cool. So now I'm in the, the JavaScript um, directory. I can type in dir to view um, what's in that directory. And you can see that I have a lot of different folders that are in that directory and files. In uh, some terminals, you can type in ls, and it basically does the same thing. It lists your, your, file, your files and folders within the current directory. If I wanted to go back, I could type in cd dot dot, or cd space dot dot, and that'll go back to the um, root directory, which is uh, my coding directory, um, or one level up. I'm going to go back into my JavaScript directory. And I'm going to uh, create a directory by saying mkdir make directory. And I should say that um, in some command line interfaces, if you're not using a bash terminal like um, I'm using right here, there might be a different command to make a directory. You'll just have to look that up. And it's actually good to, to get comfortable with Googling stuff. As, um, as a programmer, you'll be doing it all the time. You'll forget a command or you'll be working in a different command line interface and you'll have to, to figure out what the commands are in that command line interface. Um, that's pretty from a f pretty familiar territory for a programmer. We're going to say mkdir and let's call this um, let's call this tutorial dash project make dir or mkdir tutorial dash project. Okay, I don't get a warning uh, or an error, so that just lets me know that the terminal did what I asked it for it to do, and I can say cd tutorial dash project. And now I'm in the tutorial dash project directory. If I type dir or ls, I'll see that there's nothing in that directory. I've just created an empty folder the way that I would have done if I were in a file exp explorer and then like right clicked and said new folder. It's it's the same. It's basically the same thing. The uh, the terminal or the command line interface just allows us to have a lot more control, a lot more power over what we're doing, um, especially when we're working with programming. Okay, now that I've created that folder, I'm going to go into uh, Visual Studio or my code editor. And I'm going to go to File, Open. And in Visual Studio, we just can open a folder if we so choose. And I'm going to go to my coding, my JavaScript directory. And I'm going to find that tutorial project directory and say Select Folder. Okay, so it's opened that up for me and there's nothing in it. The first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to say, I'm going to add a new file. And this might be different based on your code editor, but um, follow along as best you can. And I'm just going to call this new file log.js. That opens just a blank file for me, has nothing in it. And it just, um, it's a JavaScript file, or I've named it as such, just to help me rem remember what kind of a file it is. Later, when we'll be dealing, dealing with um, other types of files, it'll be nice to compartmentalize our code into different files where we're signifying what kind of file we're working with uh, by the extension. So a .js file generally means that you're working with a JavaScript file. 
In this log.js file, I'm going to write my first, well, we can call it a program or a script, although we're not going to do too much in it. We're just going to say in it console.log and in parentheses and quotation marks, hello world, exclamation mark, and then we're going to put a semicolon right after that. Let's just look at what this means here. Um, when I say console, what I'm referring to is the uh, command line interface in this case. Um, we'll look at a command, uh, a console within your web browser at a later point, but right now I'm just saying this console, I want to log to it or I want to write to it something that's in between these parentheses. The parentheses are a way of encapsulating something that you, um, that, um, you want to um, refer to when you're uh, logging to the console. What I want to log into a console are these two words and an exclamation mark. Hello world, and I have to put them in between co quotation marks so that the console or the that node that is going to run this script for me knows what I'm what I want for it to log to the console. And in JavaScript, in general, at the end of a line of code, you're going to put a semicolon to let um, to to let node know that uh, that's the end of that line of code and it can execute that line and then move on to the next line. I'm going to save this and then remember that it's called log.js and in my tutorial project directory I'm going to say node log.js and I see this nice little uh, message that says hello world that just means we've run our first script. We've asked node which is our JavaScript runtime to run our script called log.js and it uh, responds, hello world. And uh, that just means that all of the stuff that we've done is all working correctly and in harmony with one another. So that concludes our setup for this tutorial series. And uh, we'll begin the next video by talking about what are variables and how we can use them in our code. And we'll make a, a little bit more complex of a script and dive into what is JavaScript programming for um, game and web development. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope it's been helpful for you. If it has been, please like it and subscribe to my channel. I'd also love for you to uh, check out my books and games at entromancy.com uh, or nightpathpub.com slash entromancy. And even better, tell someone about them because I'm very excited about letting people know about my games and what I'm doing here. And we'll see you in the next video.